And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Uh, then he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the peacemakers, in verse 9, for they will be called the sons of God. The Beatitudes is a description of the basic characteristics of a Christian, man or woman. It is characteristics that we as Christians, real children of God, must possess. We must. Uh, we're going to see if this thing works. Here we go. Uh, remember Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. I have to have faith in things I can't see. For he who comes to God must believe with all your heart, by the way, that He is. Do we believe that God is? Yes. That He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So my question based on all this is this. Do we have faith? Do we really? Do I believe in God? That is, do we believe the Bible? Do I believe the Holy Spirit was really the one that wrote every word of this as He moved through man? And do I believe this when it says, Blessed are the peacemakers? Do I really believe that? If I'm a peacemaker, would I be blessed? Would I be happy? Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, I thought, preacher, that uh, as long as I believed, that I would go to heaven. Listen to this verse. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. I think we're talking about a little bit of obedience here, friends. James 2.24 You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. So what you're telling me is that I have to believe with all my heart and also have to have obedience. No, I'm not telling you that, but I believe these scriptures are. The Beatitudes teach us Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 and following. We're looking at Matthew 5, 9 as our subject of the hour. How faith begins. Poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. Humble. Uh, mourners. Uh, those that care about souls. That they, they want their soul to go to heaven. They want other people's soul. They care about people. Uh, meekness. In other words, be gentle. Do these describe me? Do they describe us? How faith grows is hunger and thirst after righteousness. <clears throat> what does that mean, preacher? As the old boy says, you need to eat this book. You know, you need to you need to want to know. As, as hungry as you can get, and when I get hungry, I get angry. I need to be that way when it comes to God's word. I need to study to show myself approved. I need to want to learn more. I need to learn more. If I'm going to make it, I've got to study more than I am. Because I get weak quick and I need to keep filling up my tank. And this Bible is the only way to do it. I want to be right with God. That is my goal. As a Christian, that has to be our goal. How faith matures. <coughs> now that I am, I am growing up as a child of God, am I now merciful? Does merciful describe me as a Christian? Am I merciful to others? Am I pure in heart? Do I have correct thoughts in my mind? Do I have the correct direction, the correct, the correct paths with the light on those paths to take based on these Scriptures? And would people consider me a peacemaker or a troublemaker. Which am I? How my faith is tested is through persecution. Through persecution of all kinds of ways that we can sit up here and talk about, and we will a few of the ways. 
will I become a troublemaker or a peacemaker through all these things that I go through in life? In over 3,100 years, this is history, of recorded world history, the world has been at peace eight, that's point zero eight, not 80, 8% 8 of the time. 8%, that means 92% of the time in the past 3,100 years, there's been wars going on. A total of 296 years out of 3,100 years, there's actually been peace. And we're up here studying about a peacemaker. 8,000 treaties have been made and broken. Hmm. Peace just seems to escape all of us. You know, now with TV and all these things we got, if we're not if we're not at war here, we know about all the wars over there and over there and up here and down there. All these wars going on. We see war about to come at us. And then we have our little private wars and we have many more, many wars within our own spirits. The Beatitudes build on one another. Matthew 5, 7, and 8. A peacemaker but must learn first to practice the two elements that are taught in this uh, verse 7 and 8 to indicate a maturity of their faith. That's becoming merciful. In order to be a peacemaker, I need to have mercy on the lost. I need to have mercy on the weak. This is hard. I need to have mercy on those that come against me. I need to have mercy on those that, that want to go into combat with me. That's just not a natural human element. But that's what I need to be if I'm going to be a peacemaker. I have said this before and I want to say it again. When I was young, a man in my mind was the mightiest, the strongest, the fastest, the quickest, he was macho. And that's what I wanted to be. As I matured in life, man, that means nothing. Because I'm a living example of that don't mean nothing when you get years, does it? The, the thing that I want to do is mature. I want to be the macho man in religion. I want to have enough drive enough love, enough compassion that I will reach out to anybody and try to help them go to heaven and see the Scriptures. At the same time, I will have the self-discipline to guide my mouth, guide my actions, guide my decisions in a way that I can bring peace to these people's souls that at one time may have been my enemy becoming merciful and pure in heart are essential to becoming a real peacemaker. Am I guided by that book or guided by my own ideas of what I think I can do to straighten things out? The meaning of peacemaker, a peacemaker conceals the transgression of others. What do you mean by that, preacher? Proverbs 11, 13. A tale bearer Reveals secrets. Hey, hey, did you know, oh, so and so, did you know about, hey, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to tell him. But he who is faithful spirit conceals the matter. If I know a brother's weakness, do I want to let everybody know? Or is that going to make me look bigger, better, stronger? I want to conceal it. I want to I talk to him in private with love and compassion and and try to help the poor soul out. Of all the damaging habits of evil people, that of gossip and talebearer must rank very high indeed. Listen to this. The one who comes to us with tales of others will also reveal our secrets as well. Oh, you tell me, I'm not going to tell anybody until I see somebody. <laughs> he wants to make sure all have noticed where the wrong is is someone else. Hey, did you notice? Uh, no, I hadn't. I'm glad you brought that up. I hate him too. Don't make sense, does it? Peacemakers. 
The peacemaker seeks a personal, heartfelt consultation. Now, what does that mean? A consultation, you know, where you sit down and you want to try to counsel with someone and help them and, and, and see if you can bring them up, stir up good works. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. That's hard for people with loud, big mouths. Considering yourself, lest you also become tempted. You know, that last part really is something. If I'm a real peacemaker and I'm on counsel with someone, and they start telling me all their problems, and I start getting mad at the same thing they're mad at, then all of a sudden we're both mad, and here I am trying to counsel him, I went and got mad too. We've got to make sure that we're not tempted <coughs> when we're trying to counsel with people as a peacemaker. Our consolation is that He, God, our judge, desires nothing more deeply than justification, not condemnation. What does that mean? God wants to see me and you justified in His sight. We're right. You know, we're righteous. We're, we're obeying His Word. We're on our way to heaven. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to justify us if we'll only act in obedience to His Word. He don't want us to go to hell. He wants us to go to heaven. That is His number one goal. This was Jesus' purpose in life and paid the price on Calvary. Romans 8, 32 through 39. The goal of the godly person is not to condemn others. This is my words. There's an army of these people. They're everywhere. A person condemning others. These have an attitude, whether they realize it or not, that are a lead are under a league with Satan. Do what? I said that if you're condemning others all the time, then you're in a league of people uh, that are like Satan. You know, Satan the accuser. That's what he does. Revelation 12.10 Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. It is not hard for the devil to find imperfections in anyone, especially me. He accuses day and night and never takes a vacation. His delight is pointing out the failings of others. I have many failings. I have many weaknesses. I am human. But I just don't want all of my weaknesses and all my failings to be expanded upon and put on public display by anyone. Do you? No, I don't think that's a peacemaker that would do that. The peacemaker tries to save the face of the wrongdoer. Here's somebody that's wrong, maybe even my enemy, and I'm supposed to step in between him and everyone else and try to protect him? 2 Timothy 2, 22 through 26. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness. Pursue faith and love and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. <clears throat> Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. What I like to say there is there's no sense at all in having foolish and ignorant disputes. Well, preacher, what do you consider foolish and ignorant disputes? I consider anything that is not valuable, the most valuable, is ignorant and silly to dispute about. What color carpet we'll put out? Uh, where are we going to hang the fire extinguisher? Well, I don't lock it there. Well, we got to be mindful of, brothers and sisters. The scariest thing that is ever in our life, and we can't see it, 
His death is knocking at our doors right this second. The angel of death will appear here again and again and again and again. We need to be concerned about ourselves and each other of getting to heaven. That is something to get concerned about. Anything else is the small stuff. Really and truly. Not worth disputing about. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. He must be able to teach. Do I know enough about that book that I can teach? Most of you do. Oh, here's a hard one. Finger pointing. Patience. Hmm. I need to be more patient. In humility, only correcting those who are in opposition. Uh, I'll straighten them out. Humbly, don't sound like that. I'll straighten them out now. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, that's what it's all about, caring about each other's soul, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. You know, somebody's doing wrong. It's a serious thing. And we know that we can't go with an attitude with our finger in their face. It needs to be an attitude of real genuine concern. Man, I'm worried about you. I want you to go to heaven. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been captive by him to do his will. Such shall be called the sons of God because they are most like God in His efforts to reconcile things. To reconcile man. To reconcile with each other. And to reconcile Himself with God. A peacemaker. What a beautiful, beautiful you know, we want our, our kids to grow up to be doctors and this and that. I hope all my kids grow up to be Christians and peacemakers. Oh, it's a goal. It's a goal that I'm working on, and man, I fail it miserably all the time. But we need to seriously consider, am I a peacemaker? The biblical idea of peace is a positive force. The presence of all that is good. Peace carries the idea of total well-being to the mind, to the heart, and to the body. You know, it's like on a spring day when you're looking at the beautiful flowers and the trees and you hear the birds are singing and it's been cold and now it's just right. Don't need the air conditioner on or the heater. And you're out on the front porch and you're sitting in a chair just admiring all of God's creation without one bad thought on your mind. Pure peace. That's when I hope Faye brings me a glass of iced tea. <laughs> and Leon, you could bring it too. <laughs> peace is both relief. It is a relief from war and the possession of all that one needs for a full and satisfying life. That's the way I want to enjoy the rest of my life here. Well, I can't. There's too many things going on. Yeah, I've seen people that can and do. No matter how bad it gets, they still live in peace. Isn't that admirable? Isn't it admirable to see someone like that just never upset? Because it doesn't matter. It's just the small stuff. What matters is, are you right with God? Are you going to heaven? It is not just the absence of war or conflict. Absence of conflict does not ensure any of us 
of any positive blessing. But everything's going right all around me now. Have you ever seen anybody like that? Everything in their life is they got a new car, they got a new house, it's all paid for. They got money hanging out of the chimney. Their health is good, their family's great, everybody's healthy. They got a 29 inch waist. <laughs> they're happy. No, they're not happy. They're still not happy. Still want more. Still want their way. And still finding problems with everybody else. Peace is both relief from war and the possession of all that one needs for a full, satisfying life. A peacemaker is a person who is actively seeking to establish and maintain peace. Don't we know people like that? You can see them. I'm going to tell you what they look like. They got that little grin on their face. It's always friendly. And they're coming at you with little bright eyes. And you know when they get to you, they're going to say something like, I love you. Now that was good. Y'all need to write that one down for the preacher and say, mm. that was good. And this is one of the most important jobs that there is in keeping unity within the family, within the church family, or in this old world. He's a person who does not make war or create conflicts with others. And he's a person who seeks to resolve conflicts and eliminate all hostility. <clears throat> the peacemaker. He's needed, isn't he? He's a person who tries to provide what others need for in life. He's a positive force for good and all that is profitable for all mankind. When my burdens have gotten me weak, when the tolls of life have beaten me down and I'm laying in the ditch, I need help I feel sorry for myself and I'm getting angry and I don't know what I'm going to do and all of a sudden comes the touch of a loving hand and it belongs to a peacemaker. Peacemakers are wonderful. Blessed are the peacemakers, the ultimate work of God in the world. When the God of peace is with us, conflict is completely eliminated. Positive blessings of life are then ours. God has to be our peace. The ultimate work of God in the world, perhaps one of the reasons that making peace is a characteristic of mature faith, is that peace is the ultimate work of God. This is God's desire for all of us. He don't want us to hate each other. He wants us to have unity and peace in our lives. Romans 15, 33, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. All of us. What an all-encompassing statement. Philippians 4, 9. The tidings which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These things I want you to do. And the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace is with those who who do His will. I have to look at the playbook in order to play to win. If this was a guide for football, I'm supposed to go through the hole between the tackle and the guard. And that's the one I want to go through. I'm not going to go over center around the end. I'm going to follow the rule book. And if I don't follow the rule book, I will not win in the end. It's not just something to lay on a shelf. I need to study it. The God of peace is with those who do His will. Our trusting obedience is in following His teachings and that will produce peace in our lives. When Christ showed up, do you think that anyone was thinking He was going to handle things rashly or in anger or malice? If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, actually walked through that door right now, do you think He'd come up here with a snarl on His face stand up here and start threatening everybody and sticking his finger in your face and telling you all your wrongs. That's not the way I see my Savior. I see my Savior walking through that door with both arms wide open and tears in his eyes, knowing my sins, but knowing he loves me enough to give his life for me. He would encourage me. He would love me. That's who I want to be. 
I want to be that person. I want to be known for that person. Am I there yet? No. I'm trying. First Thessalonians 5.23 Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you, make you holy and completely holy. And may the whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can only imagine on the day of the Lord as we see Christ coming in the clouds and we see His face and we will be able to see His face as He is. We'll be able to see God's face as He is. And we won't be blinded by the light then. We'll be in our mortal bodies. And I believe that He'll be smiling with compassion and have that peaceful aura all around Him for His children that made it in this old world. I want to be one of those. The God of peace sanctifies us. He sets us apart to holiness. This becomes our persona, our personality. I'm not going to point fingers. It's so easy to do in here. There's people that their persona, their personality matches what I have described. I want to be one of those. I want to try so hard. Does my mere presence bring peace to people? When I open my mouth, do the words that come out of my mouth always inspire and encourage? Do my actions inspire and encourage? Do they bring peace to people? Even the look on my face, when you look at my face, does it cause peace? Or does it cause, you better get ready for combat. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to be like Christ. I want to have the persona of Christ. Hebrews 3, 20 and 21, the last scriptures that we'll look at in this message from God's Word. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you complete in every good work to do His will. Working in what is well pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to be a peacemaker. Brethren, I want to say this. Man, woman, child, or old folks, like some of y'all are. If we're all peacemakers, there's no better place on God's green earth as long as we're in this life to be than right here. Nowhere. This needs to be the place on our sign out there. The place of peace. Because that's what we're known for. We need to be the friendliest, lovingest congregation of the Lord's church in all of the land. We can and will and usually are just that. Let's make sure that we unify ourselves greater than we ever have before. The invitation is always there. You've heard the gospel. Jesus died for your sins. If you believe it, with all your heart. If you're ready to change anything in your life that you need to. And boy, that's the hardest thing for people to do. They've been raised like I was in a different religion. This is what we were taught. Or I don't want to make my mom and daddy, my mamma, or any of them wrong. They taught me, so I've got to stay here. I can't bring reproach on them. I'm not going to obey the gospel. I'm I need to get rid of all that. I just need to repent if I've got enough love and compassion for my soul and others to change. And then confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God and be baptized in the water grave of baptism. Washing all my sins away, Acts 2.38. Receiving the Holy Spirit within me, the greatest gift of all. Showing that I'm a child of God. If you have need, come forward as we stand and as we sing. Why?